So I'm Ken Winston, and I have taught professional ethics here at the Kennedy School for almost 30 years. And um, I want to talk a little bit about a book that I published just recently, which is based largely on the teaching that I did here at the Kennedy School. Um, here is the book. It's, it's a rather colorful cover, which I like. Um, it's called Ethics in Public Life, Good Practitioners in a Rising Asia. Um, it's a kind of introductory book uh, about ethics, um, but um, very different from other books. It's not a textbook. It's not a, an attempt to be a comprehensive about uh, the field of ethics, professional ethics in particular, but it's a set of case studies. And uh, the idea behind doing case studies is that I believe only by immersion, deep immersion in the details of decision making by actual practitioners uh, who are faced with difficult problems can one learn um, in depth what ethical decision making is all about, what kind of considerations are important, what one needs to think about um, in making ethical decisions uh, in, in, a, in the real world. Um, so the five case studies focus on particular individuals in particular situations in different countries. Um, and describes in great detail um, the process that they go through, uh, sometimes uh, successfully, sometimes not so successfully. Um, and the description is accompanied by my analysis of the situation that the idea is to interweave both the description and the analysis so that the learning is going on as the story is unfolding uh, in each of the cases. Um, the, uh, it's important that the, the five case studies are all situated in countries in Asia, um, which suggests that there may be things to learn about what's going on in Asian countries that are quite important to understanding the situation of those individuals. But the lessons to be drawn from the case studies are actually meant for all practitioners, uh, both governmental and non-governmental. Um, so it's really addressed to a wide audience of practitioners and professionals who uh, face ethical issues in, in their daily work. Um, the, the five case studies feature um, a doctor in Singapore, um, a mid-level bureaucrat in uh, a Central Asian country, um, a political activist in India, um, a missionary in China, um, and a journalist in Cambodia. So the situations are different in, in each of the cases, the, the issues are different, but the idea is that by selecting these particular cases, one will get a general view of both the kinds of issues that are important to think about and the kinds of considerations that are crucial to actually coming to some resolution uh, of particular, particular problems. Um, why Asia? Um, I think it's a legitimate question, but I think uh, I'd say two things in response to that. Uh, one, one is that for the last 15 years, I've spent quite a bit of time in Asia, um, particularly involved in executive education programs for government officials in Asia. Um, and um, I'm reflecting the learning that I've gone through um, in, in uh, that process of interacting with these various audiences. But also, Asia, I think, is important because so many of the countries are going through a period of transition into the modern world. The, the uh, case studies uh, actually take place in 
developing countries. And people there are particularly confronted with trying to reconcile the moral values and traditions that they've inherited from the past with new ideas, sometimes derived from the West and sometimes not. Um, but they're trying to come up with some synthesis of views that incorporates what they feel confident about with what they think is necessary for getting along in the contemporary world. So it's a particularly interesting set of case studies because uh, these individuals are in transition, learning new things and trying to adapt to, to the modern world. So that too would be a reason for paying attention to the book.